music goals and how to achieve them. So the real key point to this is that there's many ways and, and lots of content and people out there talking about how to set goals. But the important thing that we're going to really hit on today is how to get results. And that is the huge focus and what I want you to take away from this. But before we dive deep into that, we're going to talk about a few other things real quick. Just some housekeeping. Um, the big thing here, of course, is just here sitting at this desk. And my, my wedding ring is clacking off everything. But uh, we're so excited to have this desk. And I just can't stop staring at it. And it's so happy to have it. It uh, was made by my mother, Susan Wing, and I just want to give her a little shout out because she is one of the ones who, who always likes to watch, and I super appreciate it, and it is so fantastic and just beautiful, and can't wait to get some more people in here to do some interviews, and you're going to be starting a lot of this, so we're really excited about that, and huge win there. Um... The only thing we really want to touch upon is that you're going to see a little bit of change in the format of what we're doing here. Uh, everything's going to be about the same length. Everything just going to do some different editing techniques and putting a little bit more time and effort into to what's going on here. So uh, you're going to see a little bit of change there, but pretty much everything is the same. We're starting out with the same idea, just sticking to the the basics of starting a music career and building up as a an artist and starting getting those foundations set in place. So. We're still on that journey together, but the uh, just a little bit of changes there. Keep keeping keeping your heads up there. So moving forward, uh, that was all for people who are, of course, watching YouTube. Uh, if you're watching the podcast, you're like, what's this guy talking about? Blah blah blah. Let's get on to the to the meats and bones here. So we're going to talk today, like I said, about setting a goal and how to get results. And of course, the first thing we're going to touch upon here is just. What what is the importance of setting goals? And of course, you would already know about this in every other aspect of your life. You already know that you're trying to get anywhere to get anything done, either if it's for you, you know, you have to set goals, either, you know, you have to get your education, I need to get this diploma, I need to get, you know, this much money, I want to have a vacation, that's a, that's a goal, I want to set apart aside this much for my fund of my vacation, that becomes its own goal. Sometimes goals are not even a choice. Sometimes as we're working our side jobs or our, our careers that are not music related, those kind of goals are just given to us by our employer. And they'll, you know, whatever that may be, like whatever, it could be a quota, like you have to meet this so much or you have to have this much in sales, blah, 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 blah. So those kind of things. So, um, but today we're talking about in your life, in your music career, how to set those goals and, and you know, the importance of that. And the, the real thing I want to touch upon here in the beginning is we're starting to set the, the reasoning and getting the mindsets set is that you really need to be talking about goals and having them in place so that you have something tangible to define what, what you've done and where you're going. So having some a direction with that goal and having it set, you know, it gives you Something to shoot for, for one, gives direction and a definition of how to get there. But the real thing to think about is that it's really hard. And the more and more you do this and the longer your career grows, grows and goes on, it's hard to define wins and growth and how far you've come. And it's hard to find those things that you're going to feel good about when there's nothing to look back and say, I've achieved this, this, and this, I, I'm at this goal and this goal and this goal. And, you know, I, I've really climbed up these hills. I've really gotten to the top of this mountain. But if you hadn't set anything in place, it's just, you know, day after day, it's just, I made it through another day. I, I guess I'm a little better than I was before, but that's about it. That's all I can say. Um, or, you know, I've gotten more money or I'm getting more shows it kind of, you know, there's some kind of progress, but you don't have anything to look back for, back with and define. And the other part is that it, as you're doing that, you're not having something to define. Even when things don't work out, you don't have something to look back and say, here's what I was shooting for. You know, I didn't quite make it to that level. I, I was shooting for the moon and I, I only made it halfway. What things worked and what things didn't work. So having those things uh, written down or put somewhere 
it's so much easier to reference that and go back and check on that and see how that works. So the real point to, to really hammer here is that, uh, as you, as you're doing this, we run into this, this problem, what I like to call peaks and valleys in, in a career and, and a growth spectrum that you're looking at. And, and the peaks and valleys is just that, uh, you know, today I'm doing great. Everything feels good. You feel that, that fire in your belly. You feel I've accomplished something and I can see things and it feels good. And then the, you know, the very next day you could wake up and it feels like I, I'm, what am I doing? Somebody out there is doing what I'm doing better. They sound better than me. They have more fans. Uh, or, or you could even, I had this one real recently myself is why do I keep playing these stupid instruments? Like, if you look at the top, you know, 100 artists on Spotify, it's, it's all like rock is not represented at all. Guitars, a, a, an afterthought, you know, nobody wants to hear that kind of music anymore. You know, at least it feels like, and you're like, why am I doing this? But you know, you, you hit those peaks and valleys without having a definition or a goal or something set in stone that I'm going to wake up today. And even if I don't feel what I'm like that motivation and that fire, I know that in the end I want to get here. And if I just put in a little work today and I, I move towards that goal, the next day when I have that, when that fire finally shows up and I'm ready to go, like, oh, I, I do, you don't have to work as hard to catch back up and always feel like you're just a, like two, three steps behind because you had you took that time off or you didn't feel that good. That's, that leads to those peaks and valleys. Uh, and you really want to avoid that. The more steady you can be and the more in the moment you can be when you need to be, the farther you'll go and the faster you'll get there. Um, the other name for that, of course, is if you're a freelancer, if you're uh, you know, doing anything like that where you work for yourself, uh, we call it feast and famine. Same kind of name, same idea. If you aren't putting the effort in and you don't have some kind of business plan in place to look back and reference, then it just kind of feels like I'm, I have so much money right now. I have so much work. Everything's going great. And then the very next month you have no work and there's no money coming in. You're like, how am I going to make this work? Am I going to have to get a second job or something like that? And uh, you'd really, you learn quickly that you need to avoid these feast and famine times or those peak and valleys. So in, in business, having those goals, having a something that you're working towards and something on paper that, Hey, we did this good last year. We need to get here for the next year. We need to see some kind of growth and, you know, it needs to be more even. I can't have these ups and downs. I need to find a more steady stream of revenue to make this work. Uh, and and this, avoiding the peaks and valleys and that feast and famine is the way to go. Uh, but moving on from that, we're, what I've done is I've put together a nice little five-step list that we can reference going forward. And I'll throw it up on the screen as we go through the numbers, but... Uh, just quick five steps that we'll break down. And, and if you follow these steps and all of them, some of them are going to be a little bit ridiculous and I will call them out and it will feel weird to do them. But if you follow these five steps, I can promise you, you will see results. It might be the, the end result you want. It might not be in the time frame you were thinking. But if you're following this system and you have it to use and you will know that those results will work. So... Let's just start off with step number one. And step number one is going to be identify your goal. And of course, like everything, when you start and put it in list form and say it out loud, that sounds really obvious and uh, kind of insulting to say it, but you need to identify the goal. So in the music world, some goals that we, that we like to set is... In the beginning, it is just getting some content out in the world. So it would be that, like, I need to get my first track. So that's a great goal, and it involves a ton of steps and research and understanding. It, it can be very in-depth. It's different for everybody. But the more that you go through the small things, and then that just becomes its own little step. So if you've done the steps and it took you, you gave yourself a reasonable amount of time, you know, a month, two months to get your first song done, recorded, edited, and then, you know, learning about how to put it out in the world to publish it and how to do that and get all the steps done there. That first time, it's going to take you a lot longer than it will in the future. But the more that you know the steps and how to shortcut things and what to look out for, 
uh, the easier it becomes. And that just becomes another step and the next goal, but you don't have to go as in depth with it. So it's just a building a process moving forward. Uh, but like I was stating just before I went into that random tangent, uh, Goals in music such as that, like in the beginning, get, get your first piece of content out. Uh, put a EP together. You want five songs. So you've got one done, so maybe you do a five-song EP or you feel like you've got enough content in your backlog and you can you found a system that works, then you might be ready to put out a full album. I mean, it's pretty rare these days and you should probably have a, kind of a meaning behind it. Albums don't do that much anymore and they're they're hard to to find a good reason to do them but uh you know that's a good goal maybe i need to put out a 10 song album or 12 song or, or whatever maybe uh other things like i'm ready to put a band together that's a great goal like what do i need to do what are the steps you know i i've identified what i want to do i want to put a band together i've got this music i'm ready to to do something like that uh those are just some quick examples but in the music world there's so many other ones um, and then as, as you, we go through the steps and maybe you might get a little bit further down the steps and you identify something that it's going to be part of that, you know, one of the steps, one of uh, the, to get to your goal, it may need to be broken down and made into its own little, su- you know, sub goal or something like that. And you'll identify those as they come along, but really just, you should have a goal is the number one thing to take away here. And with that goal. Uh, it's important that you kind of put some boundaries in and start to define that. So that's uh, really important when you have a goal is to have a mindset that it should be something, you should have either a goal that's either a year out or six months, something that's got a space between now and then. Whatever your mindset is, I always like to think of it, what's outside my, my idea of understanding what the future is to me. For me, I have, you know, a, especially with a lot of us today, we, we say we have the ADHD and we have a hard time thinking long term. And if something outside the, spo- the the spectrum of what you can think of is just too far. So if I start to say something six months from now, normally if I don't have a plan, if I don't have some kind of written form or visual form to look at, it's really easy for that just to disappear out of my mind. Like I'd like to do this in six months and then, you know, two weeks down the road, it's like, what I say? Why am I doing this? Uh, so you really have to have something that's long-term past what you would normally be able to retain in your memory and, and do. Otherwise, it's just a task I need to do tomorrow. And you can just write that down on your phone and then go do it. But in this, what we're talking about now is long-term goals, uh, long-term achievements that you want to get that are outside that spectrum. So it should be at least, you know, The most it should be is a quarter of a year. So, you know, three months is the furthest we should be doing any of this here. Uh, Anything else should just be inside your taskbar or whatever you're doing on a daily basis. Uh, But as we're talking about bigger long-term goals and things and, and, you know, heights of our career we haven't quite hit yet and we want to get there, this should be at least something three, six, you know, a year, two years out. And the more that you get used to this, the more that you'll have multiple things going at the same time as they are part of the overall process that you've broken down and just gone down that list of, you know, number one, number two, number three. But today we're just working on that that very first one, especially if you don't have this set in place. So we've identified our goal and we've we've gone through it and defined it enough to where it's at least a little bit out of our, our normal range to where if we didn't have a plan, it would fall fall outside of our thoughts every day. And we're on to number two. And number two is going to be the breakdown. And the breakdown is all about taking that goal and pulling out a piece of paper. And I really, it is important that you have something to write on. I really, let me just pull this over here as a visual reference. If you're uh, watching this on YouTube, it's really, really handy. But it's just my script for right now, what I write down. But... And I, I, it's just a legal pad. That's all it is. But you should have something to write down physically in your hand that you can write things down. However you choose to transfer that, it doesn't matter. You could do that any time. But having, you should have a piece of paper to write this down. So you take your goal. You've defined it 
as to what it's going to be. It's, it's long enough and far enough out that you've got time to work with it. And so write that down. And then underneath that, uh, you can start to write down. And like I said, this step is called breakdown. Break down these steps that you are going to have to go through to achieve this goal. And, you know, obviously, if you just say it out loud, okay, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But, or, it's, or it makes too much sense and obviously, duh. But in this instance, let's just talk about an example of, like we said before, putting out our, our first piece of music, a piece of uh, uh, content into the, to the ethos. Um, so if you hadn't done that before, you'd really have to break down what, what goes through that. What do I have to do to get this piece of content out into the world? And step number one, of course, I mean, if you're in your mind, if you hadn't really thought about it, you'd write down like, okay, well, I got to write the song. And of course, you know, either you, only you will know if it's at that level where you know the song is done and you're very confident with it. You know that the parts in and out, you know, the, the musical components and the instrumentation, do you, are the lyrics done or the vocal melodies all polished and where you want them? And, you know, that kind of thing. So you write that down, uh, song, uh, have the song finished written. Uh, and then, so you've got that written down. And then the next start break down, what other parts do I need other aspects to the song? Do I want to do harmonies with the song? Um, have I written them out? Have I sung them? Have I heard them out loud? You know, that kind of thing. And then, so that's, that's the, you're breaking down the first things. And then you get to that point where you cover the things that you know. So in this example, in the song, we're talking about putting out a, a song into the world for the first time. Uh, you've gone to the steps of what you know about getting the song done and it's finished in a, in a manner that you're okay with and you're happy with and that you're ready to share it. The next thing to think about there, the next thing to think about and address are the things that you don't know. So, a great place to go is just start referencing things. Uh, pull up YouTube videos of what it takes to put a song out into the world. Uh, if you haven't done any of the recording yourself, how are you gonna? How are you gonna capture this song? Uh, are you gonna involve somebody else? You're gonna go to an engineer or to a studio and get that done. Do you have a friend that does this? Do you want to invest the time to do that? So that's where this research you do. You start to figure out what you know and what you don't know and break that part down. So we've written down that we need to finish the song and the parts that we wanted in this example. And the next part is how are we going to get the song recorded? So you, you write that down. So I need to finish the song, write the harmonies, and then I'm going to contact the studio and talk to them about how rates and how long this is going to take. And then you've got that finished. And then you start seeing all these other videos about how to publish it and where to release the song and I'm going to need artwork. And so that's the really important part is that you start to see all these steps and you, you get them all together and organized. Not that they're in order yet, but you, you're just starting to put them out. What I like to do, and this is a great suggestion I learned from a lot of uh, other people when it comes to, you know, writing or thinking, you know, a form of brainstorming is just to write it in a circle, uh, whatever your, your goal is. So in this, in this example, again, write or publish a song, put a song out into the world, release the song, I suppose, and then just start throwing out ideas and you they just make little lines from that center bubble that right in the middle. And the, the why this works so well is that it gives you space to subdivide or put lines underneath that to start helping break those parts down too. And, uh, and then there's other parts that might be connected, like that would join together. So if we're saying finish the song and you've got that in a bubble and you're like write harmonies and that's part of that, you just, you know, you're connecting those things and you visually can put that together. You can't see that on, on the podcast, but I'm making the eyes to a connection. That's really important. And, and having that is a, a huge win. So that's number two, the breakdown. <laughs> Hi there, and welcome to the ad break. We're just going to take a moment to let everybody know about our community of growing members. And if you'd like to be a part of that, just look at the info below and there will be a click there for an email sign up. Join in and get your voice heard. As well as if you're enjoying this content, please join our Patreon at patreon.com slash the numbers 145 world. There you can join any of our groups. 
and you can add to the discussion of what topics we will choose that will help you and hopefully future members of our groups, as well as join monthly Q&As and other such benefits. Again, that's patreon.com slash the numbers 145 for rural, and we look forward to seeing you there. Now, back to that regularly scheduled episode and enjoy that content. Thanks again. Number three has kind of two parts, and we're going to break that down. There's going to be an A and a B part. So the first part is going to be assigning realistic dates. And I could have just said or written down here just assign dates. Just throw a date up there. But the the middle part of that it becomes really important the more that you've done this and, and the, the more that you've hit those hiccups at the realistic part – Assign realistic dates. That is extremely important. And, and there's, it's impossible to know. You're doing things, obviously, you wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't something you haven't done before. So it, since it's something new to you, um, it's impossible for you to know how long it should take. But there's enough information out there and enough resources as you go along that you can start to reference other things and other people uh, for how long it should take. And the important part is that you're just being realistic to yourself, not to the rest of the world. And uh, that's the really hard part. And, you know, somebody else will tell you, what well, you wrote a song, you should have that out in a week. What's the problem here? And the problem is that you've never done it before and you don't even understand what, what it all entails. And this is a, a learning experience for you. So for you, that's not a realistic goal and it's going to hurt you. It's going to hinder the process. You're going to feel frustrated and you're just, you're never going to reach that goal because you've set too high a standard and it's just never going to happen. Um, so the first part is just to say how much, you know, be realistic. You, in this example, again, with the song, it, you just need to be like, hey, I, I have this much time. Do I have a side job? Do I need to incorporate that? So give yourself a little more time if that's the case, you know, um, uh, I, I need time to finish my song and I've never really done this before and I don't know when to be comfortable with it. Give yourself a little bit of extra time, build that into the process, but being realistic with what you're doing is, is super important as well as assigning those dates. So with the dates, the whole thing is that it's, it's self accountability. And the point is that not that you have to do it or you failed, and I can show you if, you, if you came to me right now and I was to show you some of the things that I've set goals for and done, there's a good number of them where I have set that date and I have passed that date. And it, it can be frustrating, but the point is, is that it's not the be all end all. You need to learn that it's not that I missed it. Okay, I failed. Over. Game over. What do I do now? It's just that it's giving you a realistic idea where you kind of wanted to be finished with that idea, that that goal or that step in in the process, but it's okay to to not make it there. So to not have that exact date. And it's just that you, in the back of your mind, and I promise you as you go through this a number of times, that it starts to nag at you and you're like, okay, I know I, know I wanted to have this done by then. I'm working on this X, Y, and Z, but I wanted this done by this day. Okay, so how, and it starts to work it way as your daily routine, it starts to work a little bit more in and a little more in until it finally does get done. And that's the whole point here is that we are, I have something tangible that got finished. And then as you make more, you learn like, okay, so it, it didn't quite get done by this date. I wasn't wholeheartedly realistic or I didn't have, I didn't know the outside factors that might influence this. So in the next time you're making a goal that you have that extra knowledge, but so that's part A is assigning a date. It's super important. It's part of the accountability and something that you get to reference and know about. The next part, is, the part B that we're talking about here is the, the breaking down of that. So it's a little bit further break down. So you broke it down to the dates and those steps and when that step should be done by, you know, overall, you need to underneath that just kind of make a little list on part B of this, uh, so of the date and then the tools that you might need. So if there's things that you're going to take on that would need additional tools. It's really great. This is a good time in the process on your, as you're writing them down to acknowledge what you, you know that you're going to need. So back to our example, we've written down the song, we've broken it down to the steps. 
So now we're saying, okay, so the first step that we listed was that we want to have a song out in the world. And the first step we had was finish the song, write the song. And so knowing yourself, maybe you give yourself a week. You've got most of the parts in place. You know, it's a good song. I just need to get the the song structure done. You know, where do I want the verses? Do I need to put in a, a break or some kind of a longer bridge or a bridge at all? You know, for example, and then, so you give yourself a week to put this in order and get it done. And then underneath that, what tools do you need to get that done? So you take a look at it and maybe you just write down like, I need YouTube. So you just do a little bit of more song, a little more research into songwriting and look that up and see how that goes. And that, that helps you get into that. And then if you go into the next step where you're saying, I need to get the song, we step two, we talked about getting the song recorded and and just depends on what you did. So am I going to need to, you know, under not any of you don't have to be tools. It could be, I need to contact a studio or a producer or an engineer or if you decided that you're going to be the one that's going to do the recording, you could do the, I need a recording interface. I need to get some piece of hardware to record this. And you put that under the tools. And then, of course, as you're writing the date, that's a good time to realize, like, hey, I've never used this. I'm going to need some time to do the the learning process of this and work with it and, and get to a decent level where I can just record what I'm doing. So maybe you extend your date just a little bit. So. That's why we put the tools at part B of this is working out the tools and the process of that, of that date, working them together helps you adjust your date as you need it. And this is like I said, just from experience of doing this, it's a great time to have these steps together on the outside. You probably wouldn't put them together, but it works really well. Now, the next thing we want to talk about moving on to step four is, um, the one that I'm going to get the most fight on and the one that you're going to laugh the hardest at. But this one, I know, I know you've heard this before and I know you've seen it and you've probably laughed it off. And I did myself until it started working and it kind of changed everything. But um, you need a visual guide. And I call it a visual guide because I was too embarrassed to call it a, a vision board. And too embarrassed to talk about, you know, that movie out there that everybody always references, like you need to manifest things into the world and, you know, the secret. And if you don't know what that is, that's just a movie that breaks down about putting things out into the universe and they come back to you as, you know, and there's that so, there's something to that. I'm not going to go deep and do the, the conspiracy theory or do the uh, all that kind of hippy dippy stuff. But there is something mentally about our human brains that when we see something and we have that in front of us, it tends to find a way to get done to become a thing. And for this one, I am going to share uh, one of my own. So up on screen right now, you're going to see that this is my one of the ones I had from last year, 2022. And this is just a a board I put together of pedals for guitars. I, I was doing a lot of recording for other artists and especially like, you know, at the time I was doing a lot of genre of the, of country and bluegrass and that kind of stuff. And I needed something that would give a nice ambient sound. If I was pulling out guitars to do some recording for, for an artist, then it was something that needed to fill some space and bring something to the track. So I needed something that would give some ambiance and ambiance and do that kind of thing. And uh, so on this board here, I had none of these things and I, I had to do a little bit of research. So for me, it was, I, I ran to the to the YouTube and I, I looked it all up and I watched some videos and I got deep into the, the JHS pedals. Um, if you've never seen that channel, I would say if, you, if you're at all into this kind of stuff, Go watch that channel. Those guys are funny as can be. And Josh Scott, who uh, started and formed the JHS Pedals, um, man, does that guy know his stuff? But anyways, so I learned what would work great for my environment. Some like most of these pedals, guitar players will look at this board and be like, "That's stupid. Why do you even have any of this stuff?" But a lot of it was it, there's a couple pieces on there really based on audio hardware that I use as a as an engineer and a producer, and 
I knew it was going to take me more than six months to put this together because some of these pieces are just expensive and I was already investing in other things and it was hard to get it done. But so I just, I made a little visual component and that's the thing that you saw on screen there. And then kind of set a date. I wanted it done by 2023, the beginning of this year and just kind of put it up in the corner and just set it there. And then little by little, a client would come in, we'd do some work, they'd pay me, I'd put money towards the business and then I'd put a little bit, I'd buy one pedal or something like that. Or one of them was pretty kind of more expensive than I really wanted it to be. And so I put a little bit, you know, half here and half there on the next project that I was working on. And then, you know, by the end it came to December and I had a pretty big project come in and then we finished that up and got a little bonus with it. And I just took the bonus and I put that towards that pedal and then boom, it was done. January, 2023, it was done. And it was super fun and I was super happy about it. And, but if I hadn't had that visual component to do it, to reference every day and be like, okay, I'm excited about this, but what do I need next? What's the next most important thing that I can use while I'm doing this? And it'll add to the sound, but you know, that kind of process, but just seeing it on a daily basis makes a huge difference. And like I said before, I know it's kind of stupid and I didn't buy into it, but the more that I did it and the more that I do it today, like I have at least three or four going right now. It does make a difference and it does. I mean, I know there's at least one where I'm behind right now. Uh, I think I set a date for today is the I believe sometime mid mid May, but I set a date for the beginning of this, this month here and I've gone past that, but I know it's there and I'm not upset about it. I just know that, okay, it's kind of my focus. The more that anytime I get in between projects with clients or working on, you know, this podcast or YouTube or any of the other projects I'm working on, I kind of slip in there and get it done because I know that's, that's really important to me to get it done. And those kind of things, having a visual representation is the important part. And we're just going to break this one down just a little bit further. And, and there's a, a website out there. If you don't have something on your, your computer and your, and your working setup that can do any kind of like visual editing or any graphics work, which is completely understandable. Like a lot of us don't have time to deal with that kind of crap. Uh, but there's a site on there and I will link it in the stuff below for the, in the podcast notes and then on the YouTube down below. And it's just a, a free, easy site. And it is canva.com. And I've used it for a couple of mine, my little vision boards that I use. And you just go on there and you type, you can just type into it vision board and it will bring up just, Hey, here it is. And then you can use the little graphics to put, you know, your dates on there so you can see the dates and, and then you can put your images on there so that you can visually see what you're doing. And the important thing here is that whatever it might be that you're trying to accomplish here with your vision board and, and putting this in motion, uh, you don't have to have an exact representation of what it is. You just need an approximation of what that might be. So I encourage you just to go on the internet, grab whatever free image might be out there and just place it as a placeholder. As long as, just as long as you know what it is and you see it and you know what step that is and there's the date next to it. And that's what matters. And having this will change everything for you. If you just went through the first, you know, couple steps here, you know, one through three and, and did those, you would probably get some results and you'd be happy with it. And you, that's basically just the steps of setting a goal. But the whole part of here that we tacked in the end that I made such a big emphasis on was the get results part. And with that, this is the get results part. This is how the difference between just getting by and having that, but this is the results part. This is the part where you have something tangible to look back and reference and to be proud of and have that fulfillment that you didn't have before that might be missing. This is a great place and where it will come from. So just go to canva.com. Like I said, if you don't have something like that, just put some visual representations. And the, uh, the other really important part here that you probably won't do the first time or won't even think about it or you'll fight me on it and say that's stupid, but print the darn thing out. Find a way to get it into the physical universe. That is really important. You know, key factor here. You didn't see my hands on the podcast, but I am flashing 
my hands, super important. It needs to be in the physical realm. You need to have a someplace where you're looking at it and you can see it on a daily basis and, and just have it there to know that it, it knows that you know that I know that this needs to get done. This is where we're headed. This is the direction that we're going. This is the, the way that the ship is facing as we're going to where we want to go. And it just seems like so, so insignificant and so silly on, a, on, on so many levels. But having just hang it somewhere where you are going to walk by it or see it every day. Or if you go in, if you have a separate room where you do your, your musical work you know, a practice room or if it's your bedroom or you have a tiny little studio you've put together, put that somewhere where you're going to see it every single time. If it's behind where you're recording or where you're facing while you're playing your guitar or you're playing your piano or your keyboard, put it somewhere where you're going to see it. And that little step, that one silly step is what's going to break that cycle of not getting where you want to get, not reaching those goals you want to reach. And that's the the big takeaway here. If like you go one through three, like I said, you go one through three, fine. That's that'll be great. You're doing something. You're moving in the direction. You're picking up new skills. Fantastic. Uh, number number four. You know, make a vision board, make a visual guide, as I like to call it, so I don't feel silly. But and put it in the world <laughs> where you can see it. And it doesn't matter if anybody else sees it. It's just matter like you. And if you're slightly embarrassed the first couple of times. Don't even put words on it. Just the image that you understand what it is. Make it as vague or, you know, vague and, you know, just so you know what it is and the date with it. And then that's it. So, so you can see it. And if you do this, I promise you will start seeing results on this. And it put a huge change for you. Um, and, and I told you this is a five-step thing to, to work through. Uh, one through four, super important. Five is just track your progress. And now that you've... You've truly gone through those four steps. You've created this thing that is a physical piece of art and work that you can look at. You have a way to track it, and that's super important. And whatever works for you. If I like to do sometimes check marks, we feel really good for finishing something. So get just something big old red check mark, boom, I'm done. Or cross it out, or you're done, or circle it. Something where you're tracking that. I've gone from one step to step two and step one is done. Oh, that feels good. All right. I want to get step two. I want that feeling again. Let's keep that. And, you know, just like everything else in this life that you're trying to accomplish, momentum is the, the big one. That's momentum is the most important thing when it comes to reaching the heights that you've never reached before. And that is the foundation of building momentum that is pushing you down that hill. So that's really all we have for today i really want to thank everybody for being part of this journey if you've made it this far please uh and you're enjoying at least part of this or it's helping you in some way share with your friends um please uh subscribe that'd be fantastic if you take the time to do that if you're watching on youtube or even if you're on the, watching the podcast just pull up our youtube and subscribe to this join our community and our patreon link is down below if you want to support us and be part of that and that's really about it so Thanks, everybody, for taking the time to listen to this, to watch this this weird guy on YouTube. So I super appreciate it, and I hope this works out for you. If you guys get some results uh, from doing these steps and it helps you, pass it along. Let me know. I'd love to share that with everybody and, and tell them how it's going. So we'll go from there. So until the next episode, thank you, everybody, and have yourself a wonderful day. Bye.